Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, The Practical Guide to Living a Fully Engaged Life. Are you ready to live your life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Welcome, my friends, to The Fully Engaged Life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. We are going to get right into it today as I would like to cover the topic of the importance of the things we eat, the things we drink, the air we breathe, and the practices we engage in. Now, all of these are going to tie together through energetic vibration. These are all things that we need to sustain ourselves, to maintain good mental and physical health and possibly even increase a sense of longevity. If we look at these things through the Taoist perspective of postnatal qi, qi being uh, energy or life force or prana, whatever you want to call it, you could even look at it in terms of bioelectricity. Of course, the Taoist view on qi is much more expansive than that, but what I'd like to do is to set aside all the mysticism and all the imagination in regards to what this is and describe how we may benefit from it in terms of the foods we eat, the things we drink, the air we breathe, and the practices that we take the time to perform. So let's start with food. Now, I've stressed in previous podcasts how important it is to eat fresh, organic, non-GMO foods and do our best to avoid processed, packaged foods as well as GMOs. In the past, I've addressed the topic of eating fresh, organic and healthy foods in terms of nutrients. But today what I would like to do is take a look at this from a different point of view, that of vibration, that of energy. So let's look at the importance of the energy content of food. So what this refers to is the sense of aliveness to the food. In other words, if you have a garden and you pick a tomato, fresh off the vine, bring it in, wash it off, and then take a big bite or cut it and put it on your salad. That is as fresh as we can get. And see that the vine that it is on is providing nutrients, is providing chi. The plant itself is alive, right? So it is providing energy to the fruit. Once you pluck it from the vine, it is now disconnected from that energy source and it will begin to die. The sooner we eat that fresh tomato, the more energy there is within it. And that translates to the more energy that we take in from the food source of the tomato. When I was young, I got to go on a bit of a camping trip with my grandfather and father and I remember being quite young at that point in time. My grandfather had an international scout as a vehicle, and we drove all over the place, upper Michigan, and and we just slept in that, and we camped out, we ate out. And one time we came across a lake, and it was filled with bluegills. I mean, all you had to do was throw your line in the water, and they were biting. It was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. To this day, I've never seen anything like it. The lake was also filled with water snakes. You couldn't hardly pull one of those bluegills out of the water without one to three little water snakes being attached to it. But what we did is we formed a bit of an assembly line, and... I was fishing, and my dad was taking the fish that I would take off the line and put in a bucket. He would take them and clean them and then give them to my grandpa, who had built a fire on the shore, 
and had the cast iron pan out and was pan frying these fish as fast as I could catch them. Nothing had ever tasted so good to me. We were, quite literally, taking those fish out of the lake, cleaning them, throwing them right in a pan, and eating them right then and there. Now, not only were those fish fresh and a great source of nutrients, but energetically speaking, they were still filled with as much energy as they could possibly have within it by the time we ate them. So not only does our food taste a lot better when it's extremely fresh, the fresher the better, right? That's common sense. And part of that correlates with the energy value of the food. And of course, the nutrients are all there. So if we can pull the carrot out of the garden, wash it off and eat it, if we can eat whatever our food source is as fresh as possible, then we are gaining the most out of it. Obviously, we get the most nutrients out of it, but we get the most energy out of it. And of course, you're going to get the most taste out of it. Unfortunately, we don't have this opportunity much today. We end up with processed, packaged, fake, artificial foods and GMO foods, which are not only garbage, I think that's what the G in GMO stands for is garbage, (laughs) but they're also hazardous to our health in many instances. So let's look at this. If we have processed packaged foods, you may have some taste, but you have very little nutrients, if any. And the energetic value in processed packaged food is absolutely zero. There is nothing we're going to extract from that uh, energetically. Now, we need to take a look at frozen foods because this is the big deal. A lot of us have our food shipped to us or it's frozen and then shipped to us. And oftentimes it's fresh when they freeze it, which is great. And that protects the nutrients in the food. But are we still extracting energy from frozen foods? Well, look at it this way. Especially if it's meat, but it's any living organism, any living food source is alive, which means it has energy and vibration, right? So if you were to fall through the ice on a lake and... You froze right then, right there. What happens to you? Well, we know we die. Can we be resuscitated? No. No, we are dead and gone. There is no more life force within us. This is the same thing that happens with frozen foods. So while these frozen foods taste fantastic, and they are still filled with nutrients. The nutrients are still available in that source, be it meat or plant-based source, but there's no energy in either. If you pull out a frozen steak or a bag of frozen peas, the flavor will be there. The nutrition is obviously available to you, but the energetic nutrition is gone. And this is just another reason why this practice of shopping in bulk is a terrible thing to get into. My wife and I don't even shop for two weeks of groceries at a time. We go every week so our food is fresher. We buy all the freshest foods we can get, usually at farmer's markets and things. And we do very, very little with frozen foods. Most of the time, our freezer is occupied with ice cube trays, and that's about it. So even recently, because of the COVID-19 and all of the fires and everything going on out here in California, uh, we usually go to annual lobster feeds. And of course, they were all canceled. So my wife and I decided we weren't going to allow any of this to stop us. And we had our own lobster feed. So we actually ordered live lobsters to be delivered to us so we could make them as fresh as possible. And they arrived 
alive and quite feisty, I might add. But this way we were able to make them fresh and not only have the incredible flavor and the most amount of nutrients possible, but also the most energetic value possible. Now I'm well aware, especially depending on where you live, fresh foods like this are not always available, especially in the winter. But we have to get used to eating what's in season and what is available to us in our area as much as possible. And this is one of the things that I give California a lot of credit for, because when we moved out here from Michigan, one of the things we noticed is that people out here, whether it's a restaurant or whether they're cooking at home, they tend to eat seasonally. So this ensures that we are eating fresh foods. We can engage in what is fresh for the seasons instead of relying on what is shipped up from other countries or shipped in from other countries that are not in season here because those foods are not going to be nearly as fresh, certainly from an energetic value standpoint. Are you getting the idea? So we want to start to look at food this way. One, how fresh, natural, organic, and non-pharmaceutical is our food. We want it to be natural and we want it to be fresh because that is going to give us the most nutrients as far as vitamin, minerals, and so forth, as well as the most energetic nutrients that we can possibly extract from our food. So many people speak of nutrition, and a lot of people have it dialed in pretty well. We understand nutrition for the most part, but we fail to grasp the idea of energetic nutrition. And this is important. This is one of the ways that we receive what is called postnatal qi. In Taoist theory and traditional Chinese medicine theory, there is prenatal chi or energy and postnatal chi or energy. Prenatal is the energy we were born with, kind of what uh, allows us to live. It's our, the life force that we have that determines how long we live. And then once we are born and on our own, detached from that source in the womb, we then supplement that prenatal energy and utilize the external sources of energy, which is referred to as postnatal energy. And what gives us that is very specifically the foods we eat, the things like water that we drink, uh, the air we breathe, and then internal and internal alchemical type practices. So let's take a look at the things we drink. Obviously, water is the best. We are made up of a large percentage, 70 to 80% water. So, of course, we're having to always replenish that water um, because we excrete water from many different ways and it needs to be replenished. So, those things that we drink that dehydrate us are not acting in our best health, are they? And then if we take a look at fresh water, I'm talking about fresh water? What makes it the best where we have the most energetic nutrients we can get from that water? Well, again, an experience that I had with my grandfather. One time we were out bird hunting in upper Michigan and we were walking through a field and he said, come over here. And I couldn't see anything. And that's when he taught me how to smell water. And he pulled back some tall grass. It was maybe about a foot, foot and a half tall and laying over. And he pulled that back to reveal a small stream. And this little stream was coming off of Lake Superior, which is the coldest of the five great lakes. And he said, dip your hand in there and take a drink. I dipped my hands into that water. And this was in October. And I put it into my mouth and drank it, and it was amazing. My hands were numb. My mouth went numb because it was so cold. And the taste was incredible. 
It was so pure and so clean, it tasted phenomenal. That is the freshest, the best thing that we can drink as human beings. And one of the things that makes it energetically nutrient-rich is because it's still moving. Unlike the water we get in bottles and jugs and things, it's stagnant. It's just sitting there. So while the water still may be purified or filtered or what have you, it's still sitting. So it's not as alive. Anything that's moving has this sense of aliveness to it. Anything that is not moving has a sense of dying, which also speaks to the perils of a sedentary lifestyle. So if we're getting water from a fresh, constantly moving stream or uh, from a glacier or something like that, that water is filled with energetic nutrients. We are going to extract the chi from that, and it's going to be an incredible source. So we need to be mindful of what we drink. So we can still get some decent bottled water and drink that, and it's fine. Is it going to have the energetic nutrients? Not so much, but it will still be a great source of good water, good clean water, and that's extremely important to us. In my opinion, things like sodas and fruit juices and these other things that are filled with corn syrup and caffeine and all of these other chemicals, anything with those chemicals, it's all dead. It's all dead. And while you may enjoy the taste of it, it has no nutrients and indeed it's actually poison. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion from my own personal experience and years of studying such things, I think one of the worst things we can do is soda. And I don't care whether it's regular or diet. In all reality, I think we're all smart enough now to fully realize that diet sodas are far worse for us than regular soda. But the truth remains that it's all poison. I don't care how you try to rationalize it. It is poison. So we know that when it comes to fluids, especially that of water, the purer it is, the better it is. The less chemicals, the less additives, the less all the other stuff, the better it is. Now, one of the problems we run into today is that many water tables have been contaminated with pollution and our city waters are filled with pharmaceuticals. We have to remove those things in order to take that water to a neutral point to where it isn't doing us any harm. So if you ever have the opportunity to drink fresh water right from the stream or glacier, I highly recommend you do it. But make sure you understand the source that it's coming from because some things can be filled with contaminants and you don't realize it. And while that opportunity is not always readily available for the majority of us, keep it in mind sometime and see what you think if you have the opportunity to do that. See how you feel after drinking that if you don't feel a little bit more alive. So it's a matter of just paying more attention to the things that we take in and make sure that we are getting the most we possibly can from them as we continue to supposedly become more civilized we can see how we are getting away from fresh foods and fresh water as we become increasingly detached from nature this is a slippery slope and a very very dangerous game that we are playing as humanity and of course the third thing is the air that we breathe I think it goes without saying that the fresher the air, the more energetic nutrients there is in the air for us. If we're out in nature breathing fresh air, out in the ocean breathing that fresh salty air, that's when we're extracting the most energetic nutrients out of the air we breathe. Even if you go into the forest amongst the trees, you want to be in with the trees and you can get a lot of wonderful 
oxygen that way. And you can really breathe and you can really get the utmost energy from the air. You can feast on the energetic nutrition from the air. Naturally, polluted air is poison. And it's not only devoid of nutrients, energetic nutrients, but it is poisoning us. It's killing us. You see, the food, the water, the air, all of those things that are harmful, that are polluted, that are fake, actually serve to diminish our life force instead of feeding us to increase our life force. This is why we keep an air filter going in our room all night long. We keep an air filter around with us all the time, filtering the air. We do ionized air. We make sure that we treat the air in our home. We can't control what's going on out and around us, but we can control to some degree our environment, our immediate environment as far as our home. And whenever possible, we enjoy getting out into nature. We like hiking. So we go into the mountains or forests and we hike. We enjoy kayaking. So we'll be out in one of the many bays in the area. And we just get out and enjoy nature that way so that we can enjoy some fresh air and try to get away from where the cars are driving. You have to get up above where the cars are driving. You have to get away from automobile traffic and pollution and city pollution and things like that. So you need to get away if possible. Now, we all know that's not always possible. So then we want to try to live in areas with the least amount of air pollution possible until all of these wildfires out here in the Bay Area where we live, it was once known to have some of the best air quality in the nation. And when these fires are raging, it gets extremely unhealthy very quickly. And I recommend, especially if you're doing breathing exercises or meditation, that you have a, a high-quality air filtration system either in your home or in the room where you are engaging in those types of practices so that you have the best air quality that you can possibly get in order to perform these practices. And then again, there are the practices themselves. Now, there are certain internal alchemical practices and things that allow us to increase our chi. And all of those things are fantastic. I used many of those practices in order to regain my health and vitality after emergency open heart surgery. And the results have been quite astounding. But these practices, even breathing practices, right? We're increasing how we are breathing. We're bringing in more air. We're breathing more efficiently. And therefore, the quality of the air matters. So in this way, the practices are going to coincide with having good things to eat, drink, or breathe. And any practices such as Tai Chi or Bagua or any of these things, even Qigong, anything that will help you uh, move this energy around in your body efficiently to make sure that you don't have blockages and stagnation and other related issues in there, this helps your energetic system in your body become far more efficient and that equates to the more vitality that you have and the greater the quality of your health and well-being and just overall sense of aliveness. And of course, to live as naturally as possible, as healthy as possible, all four of these areas must be considered and practiced in order to get the most energetic nutrients out of everything you're doing. The reason I decided to talk on this topic today is to help everyone sustain and possibly improve their sense of vitality, their overall health and well-being, 
as the times in which we live continue to become increasingly crazy. We must, each one of us, we must take responsibility for our own health and well-being, relying on or expecting others to do that for us is a grave error in judgment. So it is my hope that through this particular episode, you will become a little more mindful of the things you eat, the things you drink, the air you breathe, and the practices you engage in. And you look at them not only in terms of freshness or taste, and of course, you must pay attention to the nutrients within those things. And now, hopefully, you can look at this more completely by understanding it in terms of vibrational or energetic nutrients as well, because this plays an incredibly important role in our health and vitality, and it is perhaps the one thing that is the most important information that is never known. I began studying energy healing in the early 90s. My first energy teacher was Master Cam Yoon. Cam was actually the fight choreographer for the TV show Kung Fu with David Carradine. And later, long after that show was off the air, he put together a energetic based healing system, which was quite effective. So I had the opportunity uh, and the honor to train with him in that. And that was my first experience. Since then, I've studied dozens of health and energetic healing systems. And I have worked with energy healing for decades now. Over that time, it allowed me to become very sensitive to things. And especially food and drink and air and things like that, I could become very sensitive. Um, My friends used to test me where they would bring uh, different beverages and I would have my eyes covered, blindfolded, what have you, and I would be able to feel and tell them uh, the pH of those beverages. I could tell the freshness of foods by just holding my hand over them and opening and feeling. I suspect that there was a point in time where all of this stuff was just normal for human beings to do. And today we look at that and think it's it's something special. I don't think it's anything special. I think it's just normal. It's what we should be able to do if we weren't handicapped by our own civilization. So if you too possess this kind of sensitivity, I would encourage you to test the advice that I've shared in this particular episode. Don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. Pay attention to how you feel. Pay attention to uh, testing these things out and the results that you get. Know it for yourself. Be able to feel it for yourself. For it's only then that the importance of this truly sinks in. Okay. Hey, don't forget to visit me at www.expansionmastery.com. I always enjoy the company when I'm there. Make sure that you help us out by sharing these podcasts and also uh, do all the social media stuff, likes, clicks, shares, subscribe, whatever it is, leaving comments, things like that. I appreciate each and every one just as I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in to the show. It means a great deal to have your support, and you have my love and appreciation, and I hope that this information serves to better your quality of life. Until next time, my friends, I wish you the very best in your practices and your life. Take care.